Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of Nova's podcast. Today we have a very remarkable guest with us. Assalamu alaikum ma'am. Wa alaikum assalam. Today our guest is Ms. Kandil Fatima Memon who is currently serving as Assistant Commissioner Rawalpindi Kent, right? That's true. Okay, thank you so much for coming here today. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. All right, so before going deeper into the conversation, I would like to know a little bit about you on personal level so could you please share uh, your background and how you sort of ended up what you are doing today okay um i belong to a middle class family i uh-huh. am sindhi speaking and i belong to a district called no sharif firoz okay. my initial education was from hyderabad uh, my father used to serve in nawabda so because of him and his postings we have a lot of exposure in sindh and in a uh, kpk as well after that we got settled in hyderabad so that our education doesn't get affected while he used to have you know postings in different mm-hmm. places i did my bachelor's in uh, uh, actuarial science and risk management from karachi iobm okay. karachi and then i did my mba in finance now before even you know my graduation began my father wanted me to do css he knew okay. that yeah. i that i was studious i was very good at studying so he really wanted me to go for it yeah uh, but then those were the years after a levels when you're not really sure what you want to do in your life and you want to exper- experiment different mm-hmm. things and uh, that is how i ended up doing uh, actuarial science which was a very difficult and a very different field and mm-hmm. people had not uh been focused on that by that time yeah so i began doing it and as soon as i completed it i got uh, like uh, the same year when i when i finished my graduation i got engaged and luckily my father in law he was also very very you know enthusiastic and he re- he really wanted he was very determined oh, and he wanted really me nice. to do it as well yeah. so that is when you know i got pressures from both the ends from my father and from my father in law they law. really wanted me to give this attempt i had begun mba in finance by then so then okay. i took a break in mba and i gave this exam i was married by that time i gave this exam after my marriage and i have been very lucky mashallah that i have gotten support from both the ends yes, like mashallah. my parental mm-hmm. side mashallah and also from my in laws my husband had been very supportive to all mm-hmm. the mood swings that i used to have because you know there are days when you feel like this is not something that i can do yes. this is not an exam yes. that i can qualify mm-hmm. and then there are days when you feel really low and mm-hmm. you don't feel like studying yeah. and then there are others when you feel like you know you don't have the right person to take guidance from so through the entire process my husband had been very helpful mashallah and sure. then that is how i gave this exam and cleared it so um can you please tell me when did you join the civil services like back in like which year um i cleared this exam in 2017 like i gave an attempt of 17 okay uh, february 17 my exam mm-hmm. hua tha and then by the uh, by october i guess we received the result mm-hmm. and that is when i found out that i had cleared it mm-hmm. uh in 2018 mein hamari trainings hona shuru hui okay and i must add that um uh, when i was giving the exam i was expecting in those days oh okay. and i had given birth to a baby girl and she was only like 8 days old when i received the exam of the written uh, part and okay uh, i found out that i had cleared mm-hmm. it so everybody in my family told me that it's because of the you know the blessings that a girl brings yes and that mm. has uh, led to me clearing this exam mm. फिर उसके बाद ट्रेनिंग पहले तो इंटरव्यूज एंड देन द तैयारीज इन ऑल दैट दैट इज अ वेरी लॉन्ग जर्नी सो या बट आई जॉइन इन 2017 सो आर्स बैच इट इज 46th कॉमन या सो यू सेड दैट योर डॉटर वाज 8 डेज ओल्ड व्हेन यू गॉट योर रिटर्न पार्ट रिजल्ट राइट दैट्स राइट सो आफ्टर दैट लाइक यू हैव टू गो टू द थ्रू द इंटरव्यू एंड देन यू गॉट एलोकेटेड सो फिर आपकी ट्रेनिंग होती है दैट हैपेंस इन लाहौर in the the common training mm. so how did you manage that because leaving your daughter behind and mm. going for training acha we always have an option to keep our children there okay. there's a separate yeah. uh, hostel which mm-hmm. is dedicated only for the mothers mm-hmm. it has bigger rooms mm-hmm. and a play area 
and a dedicated aya which is uh, who is there to look after your children while you are taking the class okay but my daughter was only 1 year old and i didn't want her to you know to feel lonely yeah. or to miss me when i'm there taking the classes and undergoing the entire training because the training wow. hours are very tough yeah so like it begins like early in the morning uh, 5 6 baje 5 baje we used to have pt and then like at 5 and then after that we used to come back get dressed mm. and go for the classes um there's a specific time on which uh, we get the breakfast and then lunch and then dinner if we miss that time we don't get any food uh-huh. so you know i would not have been able to manage things with her being so tiny mm. and then i didn't want her to be left um, at the maid's convenience to be fed by her or to be uh, given beds by her so mm. i left her back in hyderabad uh for my training which was for about like one and a half years mm. and oh my god i used to have uh, sessions of crying in which i was used to miss her because yeah. she uh is my first child and i missed all the you know milestones that she uh qualified her her managing how to walk mm-hmm. her babbling and everything so i missed all that you missed so i that. used to cry a lot and i used to miss her but then thanks to my mother who was taking care of her back in hyderabad so i could manage my training and i knew that she was in safer hands so that is how i uh, passed through uh, that period it would have been like quite hard for you like, you know i understand leaving your child behind and then you would have been missing your child badly and be the first child as ah, yeah i understand mm-hmm. so uh aapki service mein like it have been like 3 to 4 years it's now. been 5 years now it's been 5 years now to jitna arsa ho gaya hai jitne saal aapne guzare hai how have they been agar mujhe thodi si summary mil jaye uski acha things are very glossy when you see them from mm-hmm. outside mm-hmm. for people who are not in service mm-hmm. for people uh, who are still struggling for aspirants for the locals on what they see is that they see we are traveling in government given cars we live in houses that are provided by government yes. we are you know enjoying perks as per mm-hmm. them but this service is not about that this service is not about um having a blue light on top of your car and then you know yeah that's just part of it that's just it's a very part, small yeah. part of it that's mm. just a very small i think uh from outside it seems like you know these things matter a lot mm. but for us it's important that the decisions we take are the ones that are there in the public interest whatever we decide in the revenue codes mm. that are you know held by us so like we are literally the judge mm. of the entire revenue matter yes whatever we decide whatever our you know mm. final signatures are on that impacts so many people mm. that there are things that you literally like ponder upon for days before yeah. deciding them so the service is not only about showcasing all the you know glorious things it's, it's a huge responsibility it's a huge on responsibility. your shoulders yeah and it's a responsibility that is you know being being that is affecting so many people out there that you are a little careful and cautious in whatever you do mm. service is about helping people in whatever manner you can yeah. people out there you know when they come to you when they bring their problems to you you get to see that they are so much troubled by the departments by yeah. the people by the general you know mm. tensions that are there yeah. affecting them people are affected by literally everything that's going around through that uh, around through us that, yeah be it inflation be it the hike in the prices of uh, uh, petrol or whatever mm-hmm. the furious avam wants some you know ad- addressing of their grievances yes. so that is what the service is about mm. what i have learned in all these years is that the only satisfaction that you get is by helping others True the that. more you mm. solve their problems, the more you know you prayers you get. You feel the prayers you get. Okay. Yes, there are old people mm. running from one office to another from mm. years, and they're you know being troubled by people around them. 
Mm-hmm. If you help them, even if you cannot help them, you even if you guide them how to go about it, there are things that you know revenue department cannot help you. Mm-hmm. But you can guide them. You know the departments that they can be helped from. Yeah. If they have to go uh, uh, to go to the court, you can uh, simply you know tell them the procedure mm-hmm. to go there. So you can you know give them a proper path to go through to mm-hmm. walk through. and they will be you know forever praying for you and will they be always thankful to you yeah. so that is what the, the you know the summary of the services mm. yeah i got it all right so uh, expanding this conversation because since we're talking about the civil services right now so when when a person likes you come to the show so the css aspirants they make sure to watch the show so can you please make us go through this process because uh, uh, as per my knowledge you have to appear in written examination and later on interview and then the training thing so if briefly you can make us go through the whole process okay so it basically begins by preparation right mm. firstly you need to make sure that mm. the mentor that you select or the teachers that are guiding you are right okay there are lots of mm. ac- academies and tutors and people who had not cleared this exam by themselves and they are the they are teaching or people who have not you know really landed up in a very good yeah. place and they are the ones uh, giving guidance about it so mm. firstly make sure that the mentor that you choose that the person you mm. look forward to is someone who you can rely who himself or herself has got in a good you know got in at a, at a good position yeah firstly after the preparation comes the stage when you have to apply for the exam in october for the whole month mm-hmm. these you know openings are there you can fill the form online you can submit it um, there's a basic fee of 2200 rupees that you have to submit in nbp uh, the national bank of pakistan okay. and um after you have you're done uh, with the form and everything october is the only month where you know this opening is there okay uh you have to look for the dates as well so after that february is the month in which you basically have to attempt uh, the, the written part the written examination okay. okay now what has happened is that there has been this uh, this exam which is like mcq based which is basically there to judge if you can qualify for the written part or, or not Hmm. So this is like the pre-written uh, ones. So that happens, and then you go for the written. And this hmm. is something new because, like, when I give the exam, we didn't have to go for that MPT. Now we have to go for that uh, hmm. multiple choice question yeah. paper as well. In February, you give the exam, mm-hmm. and then it's very important that you do not stop preparing yourself for that. Even if you are hundred percent sure that you'll clear this exam. Uh, in that attempt of yours, you must keep on revising yourself mm-hmm. with. whatever information is available on internet or whatever notes you have made and at the same time you must also be you know keeping in view all the current affairs mm-hmm. uh, things that are happening around you mm-hmm. uh then comes after february it comes like uh, the results come in september october or november depends you get to know whether you have cleared the written part or not okay. if you have cleared the written part then uh comes the next stage when mm-hmm. you have to go for the medical test Okay. Um. It's just like a, you. You know, they they check your body and everything, mm-hmm. your eyesight and uh, things like that, and then mm-hmm. uh, you have to sit for a psychological test, psychological interview. Sorry, that is not basically you know that doesn't have any score, but okay. that really impacts the group that the uh, you know in which the the interviewer or the interviewing panel will give you. Okay. So psychological in interview is very important as well. Okay. after that comes the interview final interview mm-hmm. and then by like june or july mid mm-hmm. july you get to know whether you have cleared the interview or not and then september mm-hmm. or october is you know in 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 between these months um you are called for the training which is called ctp common okay. training program okay, yeah. uh, all the groups that are there like there are mm-hmm. 12 groups in css all the people who have uh you know come in all those groups are basically invited for that training they mm-hmm. have to go they have to undergo that's like that's complete mentoring for you okay Com- compulsory i mean mm-hmm. that's compulsory for you and uh all the candidates that mm-hmm. have landed up in all those uh, 12 groups have to undergo that training for 6 months the basic purpose is for your entire batch to gel in so that you know who is yeah. in uh, which group and 
obviously this is a world in which you can rely on each mm. other and you you eventually have to rely on each other for some work or mm. the other so it's a basically blending period for all the uh, people who have cleared the exam that year yeah. and then after 6 months of common training program which is held in lahore uh, csa then comes this phase when your stp specialized training program begins mm. uh which is for different periods for ps it's 10 months for psp uh it's 9 months or so mm. so it's like different uh, p- different it's months. different for different groups right different for different okay. groups okay okay and um all the uh, one you know all the people who have uh, uh, landed in psp go to mm. lahore uh go to stambad all those in pas stay in lahore in a different ps academy okay so basically they you know then is the period then they all scatter and they go in different uh, hmm. cities for their specialized training after that you are given exposure of hmm. what we are doing these days okay so um kandil being a lady officer in a field that is dominated by male mm. right so are there any instances where you felt or where you faced this gender discrimination there are many mm-hmm. there are many we you know face them every single day mm-hmm. we live in a male patriarchal society who truly believes that the uh, positions of authority are for men mm. um when i initially joined i had to make a mark for myself i had to you know literally struggle to uh, convince others that i am equally capable of my male yes. counterparts and i can you know run the hmm. the seal or talka in an equally efficient manner hmm. so yes we while working we have an extra burden all for for all the uh, hmm. women officers there in the field uh or in the secretariat we have an extra burden on mm. our shoulders to prove it to the world and to our you know colleagues that we are equally efficient and we are equally capable mm. of this position as a, the other male officers yes. are overall if i if i you know talk about how it has been for me um there are tasks mm-hmm. you know even in muharram Uh, there, there was an area which was problematic last year mm-hmm. and there was some firing and it was highly likely or you know highly likely that things will uh, worsen this year okay so that area came under my jurisdiction mm-hmm. so for an instance my you know superiors asked me if i was okay with that you know particular area Uh, and the responsibility of that area being given to another ac hmm. who is a male so that you know uh, you can look after the rest of your tehsil while that particular matter can be you know given, given to some to other a, yeah. ac so i had told my superiors very clearly that you know since that falls in my jurisdiction hmm. and since i know the you know the this very sensitivity of that matter hmm. i will not you know bother standing there at 2 am in the night mm. and ensuring that you know that jaloos mm. and that procession ends peacefully mm. and i told my boss that you know i don't have to take guns or anything mm. right i'm not the one providing security i just have to provide and look after the administrative arrangements yeah. and i have to make sure that nothing goes wrong yeah so i'll be there in the field without mm. telling you that it's very late that i need to go home and that my you know mm. kids are there or whatever i'll be there in the field at whatever time you ask me mm-hmm. to but since that falls in my jurisdiction so i wouldn't want it to be given to someone else. to someone else so yes mm. uh, but uh, my boss is like polite enough to ask me right boss yeah. normally <laughs> bosses or subordinates <laughs> don't uh, superiors don't they mm. just they just give it to someone thinking that you might not be able to handle things so yeah we do face this every day yeah. but i think only by working in a very good manner and only by showing your performance can you uh, fight this notion that women cannot work or women are not suitable for this job yeah Bec- uh, this is so true like not just when it comes to civil services but uh, in any other field even on 
the domestic level as well women face so many issues like uh, the issues that come right now to my mind like the economic uh, disparity because women will be paid less than men doing the same work mm. uh, is there is access to education access to health care facilities the, the under representation which influence their voice in decision making these are just to name few the double standards of the society mm, true. that places unrealistic ex- uh, pressure on the women so these are the issues that women face um, so any such issue that you would like to t- talk about um see i feel heavily burdened by um my you know you know how i carry myself is basically how i influence others mm-hmm. to give permissions to their daughters or to their daughter in laws to work or not mm-hmm. so i feel that you know that that burden is also on me mm-hmm. that how i'll carry myself and how i will you know stay in this service yeah is how other people will see me and if i give a positive impression of that mm-hmm. they might allow their daughters or you know the sisters or their daughter in laws to uh, join the service or join whatever yes. career path they mm-hmm. want to join i think that it's equally important to make sure that not only you mm-hmm. leave a good impression but you also inspire them yes to make sure that they think of women or you know the girls in their families as something other than their daughter or other than their mm. uh, s- sister or or you know any such relation yeah they have an identity of their own true which they should be you know given a chance to prove true that uh, there are i since i've uh, worked in rural areas as well i've seen how things go and how people um you know think of their daughters mm. now even if we take doctors uh, you know the lady doctors mm-hmm. they go through uh, the entire you know they 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 mm-hmm. clear their uh, graduation and they go for the specialization or whatever and then they're not made to work because they are gotten married to someone through that yes and then the seats go you know yeah they they just go in vain mm. because those doctors that the universities mm. made are not really the ones that are serving in the field mm. so that is because men in the society do not believe that a woman can handle both things very well True. that is the concept that has to be changed mm. a woman can be equally good at managing her career path True. as well as managing her mm. house because this thing is somewhat inbuilt in a woman's system mm. that you know she's very good at making home right mm. she's very good at uh, at at make, managing things at her mm. home at looking after her husband or children or parents mm. so that thing is already inbuilt on her yeah what she needs to be supported on is following mm. what her dreams truly are so mm. this this change is something that uh, needs to be brought among people yeah and this is uh, one of the pub- one of the purposes is that like we want to call such people to the shows because people look up to you mm-hmm. even sitting here i look up to you <laughs> and uh, similarly uh, there are so many women out there who look up to you so like uh, being a role model that's again another responsibility yeah. because you have to be very careful very in careful. carrying out your life that's yeah true. that that's actually true Okay so um Kandil you have children right we, we were just talking before starting the show that you have three kids mashallah yeah mashallah so ye work life or jo aapki personal life hoti jo aapki work life hoti because they are two separate worlds ye do bilkul mukhtalif to inko balance karna would have been very difficult for you aur jitni meri aapse abhi tak baat ho chuki hai so like you have been facing it since when uh, you got allocated and you had um, a small daughter with you so abhi tab se leke abhi tak i know it has been challenging but how you sort of like uh, carrying it um it's essential for your family to be supportive in this yes my husband uh, my parents my parents in law mm. mashallah they've been very supportive in this mashallah. since the beginning mm. and i think uh the reason why i'm mentioning them is mm. probably for the second time is because i want the listeners to know mm. that it's 
very very you know essential for you to support the women in your family because only then they can blossom yeah. so my mother has been uh, taking care of my children even while i'm sitting here like as we speak mm. my children are with my mother who has left her house back in hyderabad and mm-hmm. who lives with me because she realizes that since my job is difficult and since there are no mm. proper working hours so children need to be looked after and taken mm. care of so she's the one handling them mm. um there are days when you know i have to work and my mother is not around so my husband looks after the children and then there are other days when you know and things are going like very very busy and i cannot mm, I focus on mm. uh, the children so someone from my in-laws just pops up to you know yeah. look after them so this has this chain of mm. support has to be there yeah it's very important the very moral important. support of your family it's very mm. important see it's not easy for me being a mother and mm. being an officer to look after both things mm. but trust me um, the moment i you know get free from my work i make sure that i run back to my home mm. so that whatever like 2 hours i have before they go to sleep i give that to them i spend them with my I children i spend it yeah. with them i don't want my kids to grow up and tell me that they never uh, you know found me when they needed me mm. so i don't want them to feel that they're not loved or that they're not being taken care of so mm. even before no matter how tired i am even before going to sleep or putting them to sleep i make sure that we this is very small game we play before mm. going to before i put them to sleep so i make sure that no matter how tired i am i sit with them i give time to them um as of, as important it is for a man to give that independence to the woman mm-hmm. and to let her work yeah uh, it's equally important for the woman to realize that children that husband that the mm. house is her responsibility and she is the one who has to do, make sure that a balance is right. uh, maintained between right. the two so yes it's it's extremely important and it's extremely tiring but at the same time it's very rewarding when you see that uh, your children are happy with mm. you and so is the, your superior or your boss and your work <laughs> is being taken care of your children are being fed well they are being taken care mm. of uh so it's it's very rewarding alhamdulillah so i wish you good luck thank you and i can say that you are a super mom as well <laughs> thank <laughs> Because, you uh, you know the striking the balance between your work and your personal life it has never been easy but mm-hmm. then again you have to do it yeah. mm-hmm. for yourself for your children and for your family mm-hmm. okay uh, moving to the next step i would like to talk a little about uh, css because as parents to watch uh such kind of shows so um i have heard that majority aspirants when they appear in the exam especially uh, for the first time uh so the highest ratio of failure is have been seen in english essay prose and composition and then when it comes to islamiyat as well so what do you think uh, uh, what would be your comment on this like aisa kyu hota hai um i've said this earlier in some interview of mine as well mm-hmm. that it's important that you improve your english mm-hmm. there are people who know that they're not very good at english mm-hmm. and since 12 exams are in english okay even if you're doing samiyat and urdu mm-hmm. so like 11 exams are in english yeah. so you have to be good at it you have to make sure that whatever you are writing makes sense to the one who's reading it mm-hmm. the invigilator doesn't really have much time mm-hmm. he has lots of scripts to check so he wouldn't really you know go through the entire uh, answer script of yours he'll just look at the outline of the essay and maybe a few you know the the starting the a few pages from the center and the end mm-hmm. whatever he sees should be the one what he really wants to see yeah. right and that comes with practice a lot of students make this mistake that they don't write answers or essays and they don't get it checked mm. uh they believe that since they've uh, read it and they've uh, you know they have sufficient knowledge so they'll be a- able to manage the writing whatever yeah. comes in the essay but that is not true um it's not necessary that whatever you write and whatever you know is relevant to what is being asked so you might know everything about kashmir issue but they have not really asked it in the manner that you have learned it hmm. so you need to have uh, you know answer mm-hmm. you need to write answers from different angles you need to solve past papers you need to get them checked from someone mm-hmm. who's a reliable source 
so that you get to know that whatever you're writing is basically what the examiner wants to read and what the examiner will um, give you score on. Another thing is that there are certain rules of pressy and essay and those rules are there since years, right? Mm -hmm. But all the um, aspirants are not aware of them. So they have to learn those and they mm -hmm. have to make sure that they don't commit those mistakes because those mistakes will lead to them having very less score and this is what you know the not yeah. following the rules is what basically leads to them having a very poor score mm. in essay or uh, pressy as far as islamiyat is concerned uh, aspirants think or the, the applicants think that writing a lot of uh, things from quran park or from uh, you know uh, or quoting a lot of mm -hmm. ahadith will get them uh, good score yes these things do help mm -hmm. but at the same time you also have to make sure that the content you write is relevant yeah they don't write relevant stuff and just because uh, they remember a, a hadith that has the word woman in it and you know mm -hmm. uh, that is not even relevant but since the question was something re uh, related to gender or to women and just because they know that hadith and they want to adjust it somewhere mm -hmm. so they'll just write it yeah so make sure that whatever is written is relevant and is basically in a flow you know it has mm -hmm. it should have a proper beginning a proper body which yeah. is, which talks about if it's an essay it talks about the possible causes or um, what, whatever the factors are mm -hmm. and then a very peaceful and a very nice conclusion also it's important to show that since you will be you know in, in public service mm -hmm. and since you are the one if you clear you are the one who uh, is expected to hold a position of authority mm -hmm. you should have very reasonable and doable solutions to the problems that you have mm -hmm. mentioned just writing solution for the sake of or recommendation for the sake of writing will not fetch your marks. Hmm. Bring up, come up with something which is doable, which mm -hmm. is you know easy to implement, which is realistic. Hmm. Those recommendations will fetch you a good score if those are written in a good manner. Hmm. So yes, the key to cracking hmm. CSS is basically not writing what you want to hmm. write not writing what you really have learned or what you, what know. you know you have to write what what's it, been asked what's been asked uh -huh. what the question is demanding mm. what the examiner wants to see you have to think from the mm. invigilators or the examiners uh, the checkers point of view something that he will give you a score in be it something mm. that you're not you know holding an opinion about or that you're not very good at or that you're not convinced about that's fine. But mm. since you have written it in a manner that has convinced the invigilator, that is how you get the score. Uh, as you said, that practice is the key because um, a lot of aspirants, uh, they do not practice. Mm. Sometimes they are confident, sometimes they are overconfident mm. as well. Or I remember an incident that one of my teachers told me because I used to be like in the beginning that um, I, I, because I have done bachelor's in uh, English. So I used to say that I have, I'm a student from English background, so chalo, English as a pressy ka to ho gaya mera. Is ko decide pe kare, let's focus on the other subject. So one of my teachers told me that confidence is a good thing, it's a very good thing, but this overconfidence can be a double-edged sword for you. Yeah. So don't go for it. Uh, so yes, then I, uh, after that I started practicing and I haven't appeared yet, but uh, I'll be appearing soon. Good May luck 2024. with that. Yeah, good luck with that and then, yes, that's hmm. very right. Overconfidence will drown you like anything yeah it's not good no, you know no matter how good your exam i don't know i've always been like that no matter how good i've attempted the paper i will not be very sure that i'll clear it mm. so when i gave css i was like ha, i'm not sure let's see i was not you know very overconfident about it because overconfidence really you know pulls you down yeah and people who were with me yeah. and who gave this exam and who were very confident that you know i you know i have written things that none of the other applicants and would have i written. am gonna clear it I'm and it's done it. already 
and they mm-hmm. had you know stopped studying further yeah. and had stopped preparing they had literally mm-hmm. started preparing for the interview not even knowing if they had actually cleared the written or not so such things will pull you down such yeah. things will drown you don't do that yeah mm-hmm. confidence is to some extent is It's good, good. Yeah. confidence on how you have prepared confidence of how on how you have given answers mm-hmm. to the questions on how you have attempted the paper yes but do not be too confident that you'll clear it yeah okay uh, moving to the optional subjects we have um, mm, talked about the compulsory subjects ab thoda so option subjects ke bare mein baat karte do you think that uh, background zaruri hota hai ya nahi hota and interest ka factor kis had tak matter karta hai scoring trend hote hain then there are some factors like overlapping with other subjects to ye jo sari cheeze hai na like ek aspirant ko mind mein ye cheeze rakh ke ek option subjects ko choose karna chahiye so like what would be your comment on this how would uh, how should the aspirants go when they are about to like uh, pick the option subjects from different groups okay i'll answer it step by step mm-hmm. you asked about uh, optional subjects mein interest ka uh-huh. ya background ka it does matter okay it does theek hai okay now for example i took accounting and auditing and um, i also took business administration because you are a ma- uh, your majors is in uh, in finance okay. my majors is in mm-hmm. finance but i took both these subjects because i had done accounting mm-hmm. in o levels and a levels and i had done business in o and a levels as well okay so somewhere in my ma- mind i knew how uh, you know these subjects work mm mm-hmm. and in accounting and in business mm-hmm. both i had like very good score so yes your background does help you and your interest helps you as well because there are certain subjects which are not you know uh, which uh, do not people yeah. do not think that they're very scoring mm-hmm. but since you have have had an interest in it or you have a good knowledge base in it so uh, aspirants can clear it for example uh, when i opted for you know i had not given the exam by then uh, by that time but when i had told one of uh, the teachers uh, he helped you know he was helping me through the css journey so when when i told him that accounting and auditing was one of the majors that i had taken uh, since it's of 200 marks marks so mm-hmm. uh, um, There, there there was another subject that he was insisting me to take because that subject is basically taught in that particular academy okay, okay. so he told me that you know mm. accounting was not uh, suitable for me and that it's not going to fetch me good marks so i came home and i was very worried mm. and i was you know confused because teachers do confuse you right yeah. teachers do confuse you they i'm not saying all but yeah. the more you ask the more you get confused exactly uh, and and the more happens. you start dou- doubting on yeah your decision mm-hmm. and your mind uh, uh, the, the path that you have chosen mm-hmm. so i discussed it with my husband and told me that you know he he told me that he knew that i was good at these subjects mm-hmm. and i shouldn't change them so yes interest will get you through even if you have mm-hmm. not i didn't uh, you know study accounting and auditing in the, that academy mm-hmm. Uh, in fact in any academy i okay. did it all on my own because i have interest mm-hmm. in it and i'm good with the numbers and i'm good mm-hmm. in those subjects so yes interest does matter okay. but these subjects are designed in a manner that they that you will have to choose a subject that you have not studied earlier but that's okay mm-hmm. there are certain factors you see this there this there does exist the scoring trend that you asked me about um there are years in which one subject will fetch you good yes. really good marks mm. and the very next year that subject might be hit and that mm-hmm. subject might not give you really good marks no mm-hmm. matter what you have written scoring trend does exist mm-hmm. but uh, having said that if you have practiced well if you have written well if you have um, had a good knowledge base mm-hmm. on that particular subject you can clear it even if you do not clear it in in score that is like in 80s mm-hmm. but even in 60s you can you know have a pretty good score and you can clear it these you know this is the entire working that an mm. individual has to do for himself yeah no one can tell an aspirant if he has taken perfect subjects mm. or not only he himself can convince himself so no matter how many years you have studied mm. for a subject that doesn't really get in your brain mm. so even if you have studied for like 3 years for it you might not end up getting a very good score in it mm-hmm. but a subject that you have studied for like 2 3 months and you are confident about mm. and you have 
enough you know knowledge about that is uh, that might be a subject that you scored good in optional subjects have to be selected very very uh, you know you have very carefully because yeah. those uh, subjects are the one uh, which normally decide the uh, group that you'll fall in yes so they they have to be uh, carefully chosen they have to be worked on mm. past papers have to be uh, seen and screened out mm. this, this entire syllabus has to be seen so you yeah, have one has to be very very careful in uh, optional when subjects when it comes to selecting optional, optional subjects. subjects yes Yes, because I have heard that um, people say that compulsory you have to pass it, and then you have to pick marks in your optional subject, and that's what gives you the edge. Ha, because they see the six compulsory subjects are the ones that everybody has taken, right? Yeah. Right. Nobody has a choice mm-hmm. to drop any of mm-hmm. those. But the six compuls uh, six optional, optional, optional subjects, subjects that you have taken mm-hmm. are the ones that can define your group mm-hmm. uh, to be better than the other other person who's given the exam. Mm-hmm. So, if you have an interest in the optional subject that you have chosen, or if you are good at it, and if you have practiced it well, then the likelihood of you falling in a good group is more than the person who has hmm. crammed the subject that probably you know somebody told him is scoring, and he himself hmm. doesn't have an interest or a background in. So, it's better that you take something that you have an interest in, but at the same time, you have to study well for it. so that you get a good score to be able to fall in a good group yeah thank you so much uh, <laughs> it was you have talked about it in such detail and it would definitely help the aspirants as well uh, let's come to a quick rapid fire <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so the first question would be if you could give a ted talk on any women's empowerment topic what would it be i've never thought of it <laughs> Uh, I think it would be on uh, how to make your name or how to make your mark in in this service. Nice, yeah. good. Okay, so what's your advice for young girls aspiring to make a difference in the world? Uh, my best wishes for you. My all the support goes for you. Whatever you do, make sure that you uh, follow your dreams, and, and at the same time, you make your father or your brother or. You, your family members proud do yeah. not leave them behind they mm-hmm. are equally important to you okay if you could time travel and meet your younger self what empowering advice would you give to her to your younger self uh, i was not very uh, talkative in the beginning mm-hmm. i used to shy away i wasn't a debater i wasn't someone who can you know confidently go up the mm-hmm. stage and perform so yeah i will i will try to you know advise myself to be a little more confident all right Overcoming obstacles or shat- uh, shattering stereotypes. Overcoming obstacles. Confidence or resilience as the key to empowerment. Resilience. Empowering girls through education or community development projects. Community development projects. I'm, I'm a huge fan of those. Hmm. Office desk or field visits. Field visits any day. Field visits. Ah, uh, yeah. Ask me to visit some site at three a.m. in the night, and I wouldn't mind. And you'll be there. I'll be there. Yes. Okay, <laughs> nice. Street food or a home cooked traditional meal. I'm a junk foodie, so yeah, street food. Street food. So you like fast food, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Any day. <laughs> Family gatherings or quiet evenings for personal downtime. Family gatherings. I I I don't know over the period I've become a very social butterfly so I would want to be surrounded by a lot of people, people. who I like uh, hmm. coffee or tea coffee no coffee. coffee I drink like 5 cups a day innovation or tradition innovation leadership or collaboration collaboration books or movies 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 okay technology or nature 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 planner or spontaneous hmm plant planner morning or night night, night. Uh, i i don't mm-hmm. like waking up early city or countryside city city you like cities more, more. than the country oh, okay that's because i like to go out a lot okay so the the final would be introvert or extrovert <laughs> I don't know. I already know about that somehow uh, during the entire conversation you used to be an in- introvert, introvert earlier, and now yeah. you are like short of confidence mm. I was short of confidence back then mm. extrovert. extrovert and 
that does bring me a lot of trouble sometimes because there are things that I don't have to say or that mm. sh- that I shouldn't be saying in front of some people and then I end up you know splitting those mm. things and then I'm like oops <laughs> this person was not supposed to have this information so yeah extrovert but limited mm. extrovert I guess all right so my final question would be uh, I'll be asking two advices one for the women for the young girls for the females and one for the CSS aspirants for the css aspirants um, in fact this is for like male and female both. yeah work hard because mm-hmm. um, hard work you know makes your dreams come come true true hard work uh, is is a very uh, key factor in where what you do in your life but hard work in the right direction is what will sail you through if you work hard on things and even in css preparation if you work hard on subjects that you are not good at or if you work on other factors and other subjects and you leave essay and pressy behind mm. thinking that you know you'll be able to do them because you are good at english or you know how to speak english mm. well so hard work is the key but hard work in the right direction yeah. so you need to have a proper ratio of which subject has to have what amount of your time also i am a huge you know uh, uh, advisor of a, a person having a scheduled time for you know all the activities so like you have like in the morning if you start studying at 8 so 8 to 12 is one subject 12 to 1 is like even if it's namaz or food break whatever mm. 1 to 4 is another subject and i I'm per- I'm a person who would believe that you know sticking by to that particular schedule is very important mm. for you to be disciplined. Yeah. This service requires you to be disciplined and that comes from the day you think about it mm. and you start preparing about it. Preparation phase is very uh, important mm. because it decides whether you will end up in this service or whether you'll be doing something yeah. else. a person who's not disciplined is very less likely to get through this mm-hmm. exam because it's an exam of nerves and one has to be disciplined about it yeah. uh, also um, it's it's a suggestion that you know a lot of people do it with their jobs mm-hmm. uh, and they manage their studies as well but if possible take a break from your job because your mind has to be on one page and mm. it has to be in one direction for you to be able to crack this exam the competition has increased a lot yeah so on you can only write uh, better than the other person if you have studied and uh, studied well and have uh, gone through most of the topics mm. right otherwise there are things that you know are there in the books and that you and the other person will be writing if you if you'll be writing the same thing mm-hmm. then that is not going to get you good marks right. if you give some specific more time and energy towards your studies only then you will know what extra you should write to be able to get you good score yeah uh iske ilawa this exam is basically of nerves which is you know it's very exhausting yeah. not only physically but mentally as, as well right. yeah. there are 12 exams and 12 exams are like two in a day and one exam is of 3 hours yeah uh you must make sure that you sleep well you eat well during those days and you with the, you know besides mm-hmm. revising everything you yeah. you must also be mentally relaxed mm. for the next day or for the next mm. exam also do not look at the other person uh, studying because you know that person might have a, like a pile of books yeah. and you might have just like five pages of mm. uh, the revision mm. and the number of books or the you know amount of books or the amount of pages that he has written does not guarantee his success yeah and similarly if you have written less or if you have written a few made a few notes mm. and if you have read a, of limited things but your content is different and is relevant and yeah. you are very good with the with writing it so that is going to get you a good score so punctuality is important mm. um, you have to be very disciplined in it you have to make sure that you are 
properly using uh, mm-hmm. you you have properly made a schedule and you're following it mm-hmm. and you have to make sure that you work very hard success yeah. is a big fan of those who work hard mm-hmm. so work hard and in the right direction yeah and for the women um see we are yet to make our name in this country or in True. this world mm-hmm. uh, specifically in this country because we are far 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 behind mm-hmm. other countries who have given um, empowerment to the women mm-hmm. so how you carry yourself and how you uh, talk to others or how you dress or how you talk or how you you know inspire others has a huge impact on what our future generations and how our uh, future girls will be treated mm-hmm. so make sure that you easily leave a space for the younger generation mm. to come instead of creating hurdles for others and instead of creating an mm. image that women should not be given such positions or women yeah. should not be given a space to move ahead or walk up the stairs so make a good name mm. and at the same time be a helping hand to those who are coming in the service or in your uh, whatever whatever job you're doing but make a space for them and it's we have to support each other women it's 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 a no, it's it's a concept that women is a, a woman would not support another because she might be jealous of her success mm. women are you know some women are like mm-hmm. this not all yeah. so you have to make sure that you support the other person it's And very important for a woman to support another, another woman yeah. And you important. have to pull her up yes you know? it's not like that is going to harm you in mm. any manner pull her up make a space for the another generation mm. so that we all make a name together yeah thank you so much uh, you have talked about a direction to usse mere mind mein because i have recently uh, read it somewhere that direction is very important because it's it's actually better than uh, the speed because a lot of people are going nowhere very yeah. fastly so this is something i have gone through so um, i felt like sharing it uh, with those who are listening as well uh thank you so much no, thank you so much for coming in today thank you so much for your time and this it was really insightful uh thank you for mm-hmm. having me and i hope whatever uh, i said makes sense and if there's anything other than this that i can assist any aspirant in that person can contact me on my social media accounts all right so if anybody needs any kind of help or guidance they can uh, they reach can, you out on yeah. your uh, uh, instagram on my instagram on my facebook on my twitter I usually uh, use Twitter and Instagram more so yes they can reach me out there. Yeah. Okay so the, 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 this brings another question to my mind Instagram or Twitter? <laughs> another Twitter. rapid fire. Instagram. I used to like wow. Twitter but it has you know since the day it has gotten it has become X. Yeah. Uh it has become you know I don't mm. know the features have changed and I yeah. stopped liking it more. So yeah Instagram. So you are an Instagram person. Now. I am. Okay. <laughs> So anybody that uh, needs help, they can uh, reach you out on your Instagram page. Mm-hmm. We'll display your Instagram page uh, as well. Sure. All right. So thank you so much for coming in. Thank oh, you so much for your time. And it was really great talking to you. And I'm really looking forward to call you someday again Thanks for um, more conversation uh, because we are running short of time now. So <laughs> okay, thank, thank you again. Thank you. Uh, for all those who are watching, thank you so much for watching. And if you have liked today uh, today's episode, don't forget to share it with your friends and family. And like always, if you have any comments or suggestions for the upcoming topics or guests, you can always reach out to us on our social media platforms. We love hearing from you. This is Nova's podcast. I am Nasya Sardar, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm-hmm.